and then if I enter a valid username like a standard user, you can see that it is actually well, actually getting the same information that I'm sending over here. I can do a right click over here and you can see different assertions that we can apply. We can apply an assertion of having text, like in this case is going to be products. He masters, um, today I'm gonna try to review the newest uh, features of Cypress Studio, right? And if you don't know what is Cypress, uh, but probably you do, right? Well, Cypress is a test automation framework that uh, well, that we can use to automate the end-to-end -end tests, right, that we have in our project. Um, Cypress uses, um, well, actually doesn't use web drivers to run our tests because it runs in the web browser context, okay? And, uh, well, the, the, the language that we need to know to develop the scripts is JavaScript or TypeScript. In this case, in this video, we, don't, we are not going to use the language because Cypress Studio is going to be like a Selenium IDE solution that uh, allow us to, to interact with the web page, with the web application. And every single action that we perform is going to be recorded and translated to JavaScript or TypeScript. That's why it is a kind of an important feature if, if you are not related or totally aware of this language. Um, this is an, a, a kind of, um, how, how I can see, say this? An experimental feature. It is not completed. It is not released as an official um, kind of feature, right? But it is interesting because we can interact and do some kind of assertions and I want to review this with you today, guys. Please let me know in the comment section if you like this kind of videos and I'll try to create more of them. Masters, let's start reviewing the official documentation about Cypress Studio. And as you can see, well, Cypress Studio provides a visual way to generate tests within the test runner by recording interactions against the application under test. It means that if, let's imagine that you open a login website, right? And, and you type the login, the password, and then click on the login button. Well, what is going to happen in the background with Cypress Studio is that it is going to translate the different interactions to a test code, okay? It is going to translate the interactions to JavaScript and in a specific using Mocha and Chai because also you can assert if the login was successfully done, validating, for example, the title of the website or some uh, property or sub, some web element that what is actually appearing after the login action, okay? Um, so the idea here is to understand that right now, at the moment that I am recording this video, I only have the click interaction, the type, the check, and the uncheck, and also the select Cypress command. Uh, this is an experimental feature that is, is currently in, in, in build, in development, right? And we can access the experimental feature adding this attribute in the cypress.json. So I'm going to try to explain you this step by step with a practical example, okay? So let's let's review this. I'm going to come here to, to a folder that I have called, um, let me see, Cypress Studio Overview. And here I'm going to be opening CMD, a command prompt in, in Mac would be the terminal, right? Um, and I'm going to be uh, installing, right, or actually initiating a, a node project using npm init, okay? Uh, using this command, I'm going to be uh, required to enter the package name, the version, the description, if you want to, an entry point, the test command that I need, uh, the git repository, the keywords that reference to this package, for example, in this case, it would be something like Cypress framework, just to give you an example. Framework testing, that could be another keyword. <coughs> I'm sorry. The author is going to be Joan Media <coughs> and the license is going to be ISC. Then it is actually asking me if this is okay. So I'm going to say yes. And I, if I come here to the Visual Studio code and I open the folder where I have generated that particular file, you're going to see that I have a package.json with all the properties inside that I have defined. The, the package name, the the author, join media, the keywords, right, is going to be an array of objects over here. I'm sorry, an array with the strings inside. And But right now, I don't have a Cypress installed in, in, this, in this project. So I need to use another command. 
which is going to be something like let me check my notes but it is mp um, let me see npm install if i am not wrong cypress and it's going to be something like save dev it is going to be installing cypress as a dev uh, as a development dependency okay let's see if it works but it should all right, let's see. Now that, I, as you can see, if I scroll down a bit in the package.json file, I have already automatically generated a dev dependency with the name Cypress. And also, as you can see over here, we have a node modules folder with all the dependencies that Cypress needs to run. All right, so the next step is going to be something like um, run the command npm run or I'm sorry mpx cypress open okay this command is going to be opening and also scaffolding some folders in the root directory over here you're gonna see that now I have a cypress.json okay and also a cypress folder this cypress folder is going to have different folders as well like fixtures integration plugins and support this is something that I have treated in the channel if you want to learn cypress in depth please go to the playlist um, tab in this channel and you're gonna find a cypress tutorial for beginners all this stuff stuff is going to be explained step by step for free for you okay so um now th the next step for me for this particular demo is going to be opening the integration folder and delete all the stuff that is inside okay because the integration folder is the the folder where we have to um, save the different test scenarios and different JavaScript scripts, okay? But in this case, I'm gonna start from scratch cr generating a successful logging, okay? That JS. And that there is something else important. I'm gonna cancel the MPX Cypress open process because I need to um, change the cypress.json with two parameters the first one is going to be the experimental feature or the experimental studio property that we need to add in the cypress.json right and then i also need to um, deactivate the mm, chrome uh, web security okay in this case uh, probably you don't need to do this but in my case i need to do it okay i'm gonna be setting the the chrome web security property as false and then <clears throat> i'm gonna rerun the mpx cypress open command okay you're gonna see that now it is going to be opening the the terminal i'm sorry the test runner again and you can see that i have an integration test file over here okay and it is the successful login.js right now if i run this you're gonna see that it, it is saying that no test found and it is basically because the successful login.js doesn't have any javascript code inside there is no test script inside of this so in order to use the cypress studio feature we have to click on create this test with cypress studio and here you are going to be asked to be enter the a valid url to visit in my case i'm going to be visiting the same website that i have used for the selenium id uh, extension okay which is www.sasdemo.com okay you're gonna see that right now the, the website is already uh, loaded and every single action that I perform here, you're gonna see in the in the left panel, right? The different actions that I'm gonna be using because the first one is visiting the website, okay? And then if I enter a valid username like a standard user, you can see that it is actually, a, well, actually getting the um, or typing the same information that i'm sending over here and if i click on password notice how it is going to well another command is going to be appearing in this in this panel okay i'm gonna click on password there it is there is the click already um uh, well basically generated and then i'm gonna be uh, entering the secret sus a password okay and then i'm gonna be clicking on login right and as you can see well i have done the login uh, click on the login button and if i want to specify an assertion to make sure that the products word over here is the assertion or the validation that i need in order to make sure that it was logging correctly i can do a right click 
over here and you can see different assertions that we can apply. We can apply an assertion of having text, like in this case it's going to be products, but I also can validate that it has the, the, the class title, okay? And I can also specify or make sure that this product's web element is visible. And all this stuff is being automatically generated in the test runner like magic, right? So uh, the next step is going to be something like save commands. We can add a name here. We can say success login. <coughs> okay. I'm going to save the test and you're going to see that the same scenario is going to be executed. We can execute it as many times as we need. And also we can see in the successful login.js file, uh, well, a neat with the test name, right? And all the, every single um, command that I have automatically generated in that particular scenario, okay? There is something interesting here. If you want to modify some um, some command here, you, you, let's imagine that you don't need the assertion of class title. Well, you can come here and press the add commands to test, okay? And you're gonna be capable, for example, to delete, if I am not wrong, or you can't. Oh man, you can't, I'm sorry for that, guys. If you activate this um, this this feature, well, you're gonna be capable to add, for example, another assertion. But you're not going to be capable to uh -huh. you're gonna you're not gonna be capable to delete another command if you want to. You you will have to to delete the the code from from here. But let's take a look at this another example because I want to generate another test, okay, another spec file, but it is going to be failed login, okay, I'm gonna open the failed login uh, feature file or, or the or the JS file, actually, and I'm going to be creating a new test uh, over here with Cypress Studio, it is going to be HTTPS um, www.saucedemo.com, right, and well, in this particular case, I am using an incorrect oh, source demo. <laughs> I have entered an invalid um, visit or an invalid website. I'm sorry, guys. Let's see. I'm going to start it again. Um, HTTP www.saucedemo.com. I think that it is correct now. Let's see. It is. Okay, now I'm going to be entering a wrong username and a correct password, for example, secret sauce, which is the correct password for this website. I'm gonna click on login. And let's imagine that I'm gonna be adding an assertion to make sure that the epic sad face uh, warning message here is the one that I need. Um, and, I'll, and also I can add an assertion to the attribute error, okay? And also an assertion to be visible. But I don't want to save the command or the assertion to make sure that it has the attribute error because we don't need it. Let's imagine that scenario. Well, you can press on this X button because you don't want that assertion and that's that's basically it. You can do it uh, pretty easy or eliminate or delete a command that you don't want to save, okay? That's important. I'm gonna save the command. <clears throat> I'm gonna <clears throat> say, I'm sorry for that, wrong test. I'm gonna save the test with the name wrong test. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the test is working perfectly. Now, <clears throat> let's imagine that you don't want to execute this manually, right? Because you need to execute the both tests at the same time or sequentially. It's okay, right? So you can use another command here, which is, I'm going to clear this stuff, which is mpx run, I'm sorry, cypress run. It is going to be executing the tests in, in, in a headless mode using a, a default a web browser called Electron. But you can use, for example, Chrome or Firefox or Edge if you want to. You just have to send uh, the, the parameter over there uh, to, to run the test on Chrome, right? Now that, as you can see over here, we have, um, well, executed this, the, the different uh, scenarios and actually it has automatically generated videos. If we want to see the videos, right? Let me see. You're gonna see that we have some videos here and 
this is the test execution. And this is amazing, right? Because we have the ability to automatically generate the different scenarios, but also in the moment of execution, we can generate the screenshots and videos and all the stuff that we need, right? So uh, guys, I, I hope that, that this video kind of help you. I know that I have done a similar video before, but the assertion part wasn't uh, integrated at the moment that I recorded before. So I wanted to bring a kind of an update for you. And if you want to well, well, receive more updates about this amazing feature that, well, actually think that it's gonna be promising in the future, let me know that because I'll, I'll be more than glad to keep bringing, bringing this kind of videos to you guys. So thank you very much, guys. See you in the next one. And please subscribe and let a, a good like in the video. Bye-bye.